Welcome. It's the Greg and Lisa show and I'm Lisa. I'm Greg. And our topic this week is approaching Palm Sunday and Easter. As I was praying about what to talk about on our show this week, I kept asking God, you know, what would you have us to share with our audience this week? And, you know, I kept going back and forth between a couple topics, but I got up this morning and there was a video in my inbox from Family Talk, Dr. Dobson's Family Institute. And it was like that was God telling me, you know, this is really what we need to share. Well, I'm glad you thought of that because I thought Palm Sunday, like I only wash my hands once a week. So I call that, you know, Palm Sunday when I do. <laughs> Just like a lot of people used to get a bath once a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously Palm Sunday, very, obviously yeah. it's a seasonal topic, but it's a very important uh, topic also. It is. And a lot of times children don't really grasp what it's all about. And I remember when I was a kid and we made the palm leaves and mm -hmm. we talked about Jesus riding on the donkey. But really what it signified when I was a kid really was that was Jesus riding on the donkey into Jerusalem with people, you know, waving their palm leaves. But it didn't really go in, you know, or I didn't retain it as what it really meant. Right, right. You know, so this week we've decided to dedicate our show to Palm Sunday and to children and maybe give them a little more understanding about what Palm Sunday is all about. And then at the end, we do have an easy craft um, that maybe you want to do with your children. Right. And um, actually, surprisingly, there is a lot about Palm Sunday in the Bible. I wouldn't have, who would have thought? Oh, yeah. It's you know? actually in Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all <laughs> mention about Jesus riding into Jerusalem and Palm Sunday. Right. So I'm going to read from one of those right now. So uh, this is uh, just a little background, obviously, before we start uh, the short video that Lisa mentioned. Uh, so this is Matthew chapter 21, uh, verses 1 to 11 um, from the NIV translation. But, you know, obviously, whichever one you have is fine. So as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them. And he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the full beast, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them, put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from their trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds went before him and were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Yeah, obviously, there's a lot to take in there, but you know, if we want a little lighter note on that, am I allowed to go up to somebody and say the Lord needs this and just you know take it and? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> That's probably a rare. Occasion. Yes, but yes. no. I mean that that's that's kind of sets the whole uh, background for what we're doing today. It that, does, uh, and you know there was five hundred years between the prophecy when then Jesus fulfilling the prophecy and riding the donkey into Jerusalem. Right. And, yeah. Yep. So there's a lot, you know, a, a big time span. Yeah, there you are know. older prophecies than that he fulfilled too. It, yes. It's really pretty amazing. But right, specifically right. this one, five hundred years, still a long yeah. period of time to wait for that. It is. So, but the, one of the questions is that, you know, a, a child might have or you might want to share is what was the purpose of waving the palm leaves when Jesus was riding the donkey into the city of Jerusalem? Well, the palm leaves were a symbol of victory and triumph as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Okay. Um, kind of like a, almost like cheerleaders with the pom poms, only it was, you know, much more symbolic, much more important. Right. But, it was sort leaves and similar, flowers yeah. and things that yeah. they were, you know, like you said, hooray and hurrah. Yeah. He was, you know, coming into the city. So why did Jesus ride a donkey into Jerusalem? So uh, Jesus riding a donkey into Jerusalem uh, was a sign of humility and selflessness. So 
donkeys are symbols for humbleness, service, suffering, and peace. And by choosing a donkey instead of a horse, Jesus showed humility. So, and as we talked about the prophecy, this fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy about the coming of a righteous king on a donkey uh, 500 years earlier. Right. Imagine hearing that 500 years before. Like, he's going to ride a donkey? Come on, yeah. man. Like, are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Well, the king's going to ride a donkey? Sure he is. Right, the righteous king's going to ride a donkey. <laughs> sure yeah. he is. But, so. you know, it just goes to why we need to, you know, keep up with the teachings and why they did too because right. – it's, it's not it, often what we expect it to be. No, it's not. So what was the name of the donkey that Jesus rode on? Locale. Locale. So Palm Sunday is Jesus. I didn't know that till I read this sheet, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it either until I, I researched say, it. <laughs> that's, yeah, but not many no. people. The name of the donkey, that's that's yeah. deep trivia. There's actually a book out there about it. Oh, too. yeah, I yeah. bet there is. That's yeah. very cool. Yep. So Jesus riding into Jerusalem, it actually marks the beginning of Holy Week. And Jesus' grand entrance, and we talked a little bit mm -hmm. ago, that it's actually recorded in four books of the Bible. That's how important it was. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if you've read any of the Bible, you've probably read one of those. So that you can't really miss this. No, <laughs> this is not right. something that's touched on one time. And, right. and there are some things that are touched on less than others, but you can't miss this one. No. And the other thing you have to look at is why was it Jerusalem that, you know, Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem? Because so, it was called the holy city right uh, the epicenter of god's involvement uh, with humanity for a thousand years before jesus came in on his donkey right so and when jesus was entering jerusalem it's like we talked about a few minutes ago it was like a roaring parade right everyone was screaming and yelling hosanna and celebrating jesus entering their holy city and the whole city was in an uproar when jesus arrived but jesus rode quietly on the donkey all through the city as the crowds cheered and roared and why do you think that jesus was kind of a little solemn as he was riding through the city well he knew very well what was going to happen to him he did he knew what he was you know actually what this whole holy week was going to mean he, he to knew him. It was leading up to the you know the the end of his his, his you life. know the human his the human, human part of god right. and man anyway right right so what does Hosanna mean? Save us. Save us. I actually did know that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it mean when the people were tossing their robes on the ground at the feet of Jesus? Um, it was a sign of importance. Um, they certainly wouldn't want their king to be walking all over right. the dirty ground. Yeah. Why did the disciples, though, put their robes or cloaks on the back of the donkey before Jesus sat on him? Uh, kind of similar to why they were throwing their cloaks down, a, a sign of reverence. Uh, they knew he was king of king and lord of lords and yeah. wanted to, you know, just didn't seem right to them for him to be just sitting on the back of the donkey. Yeah. I don't wonder, I, in the reading, I don't know that the disciples really understood why jesus was riding the donkey into jerusalem because the people there that were roaring and yelling and saying hosanna hosanna save us they were thinking that the king was coming to help them and to save them in the sense of getting rid of rome yeah <laughs> they you yeah. know it was going to be a war and we we're going to get these people out of there yeah yeah so why was Jesus going to Jerusalem? And what did he tell the disciples? So he told his disciples he was going to be put to death. So he was going to lay down his life for his people. Uh, you know, obviously the, the, the crucifix, the, the crucifixion, the cross, he was going to make the ultimate sacrifice so we could all be forgiven and set free. But, you know, he told them that. Um, and I, I, you know, I can't speak for them i certainly can't speak for you but if that were me and he said that like oh sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you, it wouldn't really hit you <laughs> yeah no because you would think you know especially when they were going with him and he was riding you know down the streets and they say all saw all the people you know yelling and screaming and some of them people wanted to know who this was and what was going on um from the city because yeah. not a hundred percent of all the people knew you know the disciples were probably focused more on crowd control yeah. and kind of keeping people keeping everybody at I, I, can, I can only speculate based right. on what i've seen on the chosen from yeah. you know how they acted in certain situations yeah. so the bible doesn't specifically address that but right. you can imagine they were probably right yeah. more worried about the logistics of the whole thing yeah that was immediately in front of them not the bigger picture right 
Well, we're going to take a look at a video, and it's a great video, and it's made from the book, The Donkey That No One Could Ride. And the reason that we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, Palm Sunday before you looked at this video to answer some of the questions. And as you watch this video with your children, you'll be able to answer some questions and talk a little bit about the book after um, you look at it and, you know, maybe do a craft together. But this book was written by Anthony Stefano, and it was illustrated by Richard Cowdrey. This video was taken with approval from Family Talk, a Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. And after the video, we're going to do a little quick discussion about it. And we're going to do a quick craft that you'll be able to do with your kids as you discuss the real reason for Christmas. For Christmas. <laughs> for Well, I mean, it, it's, you know, this uh, is kind of the, this is, it's the back end of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> It's a little different. It is a little it's different. It's the other side of that. But yes. yeah, and, and we It's the we, reason for yes. Easter. And we are also not kidding when we say we got permission. She literally I talked did. to the family. I did. I called them today because I like to make sure that we are allowed to do things. And so we got approval today to show this video. So enjoy it. And if you are familiar with Dr. Dobson, you will, you know, hear his voice as one of the the um, characters in the book but take a look at it share it with your kids and enjoy this time together and if you really like the book please buy it and, and keep it as one of your books to use every easter and to share um, the story with your children about what's happening in palm sunday and holy week and about what is happening after Holy Week, and we discuss Easter in our next session. Right, so. So it really is good stuff. We will yeah. see you back after the video here. Okay. There once was a donkey, young, weak, and small, so weak he could carry nothing at all. Even when children sat on his hide, he'd wobble and tumble and fall on his side. No matter how much he tried or he cried, this was a donkey that no one could ride. He couldn't haul stones, he couldn't dig ditches, or carry rich men with their big bags of riches. He couldn't pull carts with huge bales of hay, just lifting a feather would make his legs sway. No, this donkey was useless, no good at all, too puny, too shaky, too scrawny, too small. Now, the donkey's owner was quite mean and tough. He said to the donkey, I've had quite enough. You can't lift a person no matter how light. So take all your things and get out of my sight. Go away from here, donkey. Go away and just hide. What use is a donkey that no one can ride? So the donkey was led to the far edge of town, pulled by his neck with his head hanging down. He was tied to a post on a small dusty road and left all alone while his tears overflowed. Left all alone and wondering why he was born to be weak and born to be shy and born to be frightened and born to cry. Just then two men appeared alongside the post in the village where the donkey was tied. They came without warning on that fateful day. They came and untied him and took him away. The donkey was frightened, he said to the men, where are we going? And then said again, Where are we going? And what about me? Please leave me alone and just let me be. Keep quiet, the men said. We mean you no harm. Just follow us quickly. No cause for alarm. And they walked on for miles and miles until they got to a town at the foot of a hill. At the foot of the hill stood a man tall and thin, wearing a cloak and a beard on his chin. He had eyes that seemed sad and longish dark hair, and a voice soft and gentle that floated on air. He said to the donkey, It's time that you knew about the great thing that you're destined to do. You'll carry me into the city, we too. Into the city, I'll ride atop you. What's that you say? cried the donkey with dread. There's simply no way. You've been misled. I'm just a small weakling. You must go ahead and look for another to take you instead. You see, I'm just hopeless. Ever since I was born, I've been subject to insults and teasing and scorn. My back's somewhat crooked. My legs aren't strong. I'm just a big failure who does everything wrong. 
Won't you believe me? The sad donkey cried. Just leave me alone and cast me aside. I'm just a poor donkey that no one can ride. The man looked at him with a face that was wise, with a warm, tender smile and love in his eyes. And then in a calm and mysterious way, he opened his mouth and started to say, My help is enough. It's all that you need. It's all you require in life to succeed. The weaker you are, the more strength I give. I'll be there to help you as long as I live. I know you feel tired and frightened and broken, but do you believe these words that I've spoken? Do you believe, I ask you again? Do you have faith? I can heal you, my friend. For some reason, the donkey was sure that he knew. The words that the man spoke were honest and true. They were said with such kindness and caring and love. It seemed that they came from heaven above. The donkey burst out. I believe that it's true. I believe. He repeated. I believe. Yes, I do. The man stretched his hand out and closed both his eyes. And then to the little donkey's surprise, he felt a sensation he couldn't control. From the top of his head right down to his soul. All of a sudden, he realized that now his body was stretching and changing somehow. Most amazing of all, at that very hour, the donkey began to sense he had power. He didn't feel small or weak any longer. Instead, he felt strong and stronger and stronger. He could feel in his body the energy flowing. He could see with his eyes that his muscles were growing. His back felt like iron. His legs felt like steel. His chest felt so strong it just couldn't be real. It's a miracle, a miracle, the donkey cried out. A miracle, a miracle beyond any doubt. In order to show all the thanks that he felt, the donkey bowed his head down and knelt in front of the man who made him so strong with a beard on his chin and hair that was long. The man looked upon him with sorrowful eyes then sat on his back and told him to rise. We're bound for that city that's west of the hill. I have a great mission I need to fulfill. The donkey got up, his tears had all dried. With big bulging muscles he started to stride. No longer a donkey that no one could ride, now he had courage and power and pride. He started to stride, he started to run. He couldn't believe he was having such fun. With a clippity-clop and a clippity-clop, he kept right on going with no need to stop. But as they drew near to the gate of the town, the donkey could hear a very strange sound. The curious noise made him perk up his ears. What could it be? It sounded like cheers. Soon crowds of people came into sight, shouting and waving their arms with delight. They were cheering the man and giving him praise, yelling hosannas and crying hoorays. It was amazing to see the love they expressed. They called him a prophet and said he was blessed. In front of the donkey they threw with their arms, flowers and garments and branches and palms. They laid all these down and started to sing, calling the man a savior and king. The donkey was happy, gone were his tears, never had people sung in his ears. Never was there a moment so sweet as carrying a king with palms at his feet. And all his life after the donkey rejoiced that the king had made such a wonderful choice. To help with the greatest mission of all, the king used a donkey, young, weak, and small. All right, everybody, we're back after the video, and I got a pair of scissors. Yeah, and I have a pair, too. But we want to talk a little bit about the video, because if you listen to the video and you listen to what that donkey was going through, you know, the donkey was... The donkey -o. The donkey. <laughs> I'm on a roll Can today. Can I have some whatever you had? <laughs> the donkey was bullied and made fun of, sure. and... He felt like he couldn't do anything. His back was crooked, and he just felt like he was worthless and he was no good until, you know, Jesus touched him. 
And then it was like he became a whole new donkey and his confidence, he had self-confidence, he was strong. And it was because Jesus touched him and he had a plan for his life. He was playing the role that he was meant to play um, for such a time as this. And so just like Jesus, he has a purpose and a plan for all of our lives, whether mm -hmm. we're kids, whether we're adults, whether we're retired, no matter what. He has a plan for every single one of us when we're born. And that's something important to think about. You know, nobody can ever make you feel less than unless you let them. And with Jesus, you don't need to let them because he's always going to help you be strong Absolutely. and get through whatever challenge in life that you're going through. But anyways, we hope you like the video. Um, feel free to watch it again. Um, you can also go to Family Talk and pull it off of their website as well as our um, The Greg and Lisa Show. And I'm sure it's probably on a few other places yeah, too. Yeah, I'm sure yep. it is. It's good stuff. Uh, we're probably not the first. No, I'm sure we're not. We're going to make a palm leaf, and it really is um, a pretty simple process. Yes. You just take a simple piece of paper. It can be green, or you can have the kids color it green with crayons if you don't have any. And all you can do is take a pen or a marker, and you're just going to make like a semi-deflated football. So, or, or you make a semi-deflated. You can draw it yourself, or you can be like me. And I sit in the office, and I write insurance software, so I can't draw. So... <laughs> She drew one for me. <laughs> yes. So if you need, you know, it, you'll, you'll yeah. see it, it. It's a leaf. You, you yeah. it sort of uh, kind of like an elongated football. Right. With some, you know, lines in it. When you see a little sort of vein yeah. on leaves normally. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to worry about it being perfect or large or small because everything that they were doing for Jesus as he was riding into Jerusalem, they were just breaking branches off. It was whatever they, they just, had. Yeah, yeah, whatever they had. Happened to be palm leaves. But. Right. And also, you know, the palm leaves, or it just says, you know, branches of the trees, and they were throwing flowers just to um, celebrate him coming through, just kind of like when you get candy at a parade. Yeah. They throw candy at you because they're happy to see you there. Was Jesus throwing candy from the donkey, Lisa? No, so? he wasn't throwing candy from the donkey. But he was just being, you know, solemn and going yeah. through, and he was humbled that people were welcoming him, and he was just ecstatic that, you know, he he was playing his part that God had prepared him for. All right, so you when um, he came yep. to Earth. So you once so. you um, I'll just put this here. So you draw your, you know, elongated sort of football with the lines in it, and then we're gonna kind of cut into those lines a little bit so that our leaf has a little bit of movement. I feel like I'm on the Today Show right now doing a craft. You know, this is... <laughs> yeah. You have to tell your daughter I was talking and using a pair of scissors. At I don't think she time. thinks I'm capable of that. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, we just we want a little bit of movement on here. Um, yeah, you'll get the movement. You can start seeing some of the movement as you start cutting the, yeah. the leaf leaves. So. so you can see there, it starts to... Kind of get like that, and then, yeah, you can see the. Well, she was faster going, than me. I need so. to get on the ball. You don't <laughs> want to replace me after this. This is a terrible performance on my Oh part. no, you're doing fine. Yeah. If you have a straw, it can be any type of straw. But if you have a bendy straw, you can put a little bit of movement in your leaf to start with, if you want to. Mm -hmm. So, and if you decide you might want two straws just to give yourself a longer stem, you can do that as well. So what you're going to do is tape your straws on the back of the leaf up the center. Are you Try. doing two straws or one straw there? I'm going to do two because we made a pretty long leaf. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it does help if it goes up the back. Yeah, a if bit it goes up too. the back. So you can put a couple pieces of tape on it. You can um, even do a fancy thing I learned from my children and like put the straw inside the straw. Yeah. So when we yeah. get when we get more than one straw at a restaurant, we see how many we can do. <laughs> One time we got like six of them because the waiters and waitresses just kept bringing them. Oh, they were we just, they were that. extra nice to you yes, guys, they that's were. for sure. They were. So, all yeah. right, so I'm going to I'm gonna do that technique. And yeah, that does go pretty much all the way. Yeah. All so, the way up there if you want it to. Yeah. I'm taping my two straws together. So. Yeah, well, I'm going to, I'll put a yeah. tape over the joint yeah. too. Yeah. Um, Tape can be a hot commodity when you have children, though. Oh, yeah. They love them some they tape. Love, they, 
<laughs> they love lots of tape, that's for sure, especially when they're building. They've got lots to do. Lots to do, and sometimes they think there are jobs you can only do with a Sharpie. Yeah, that's true, too. No washable marker here. Yeah. Okay. You can kind of bend your leaves a little bit. Yeah, that helps kinda, get the helps get yeah, the movement. Uh, yeah. So then they can go around the house and they can wave their palm waving leaves. Waving it does. Yeah, um, make a couple know, of them. So get they one can on the bottom them, here. So. Uh, you know, if you have a yeah. nice fan in the house, you can hold it in front of that, get some movement going. Run yeah. around outside with it, too. Yeah. I, you know, we talked about getting out into creation a little bit. Yeah, we did. Get out there with your leaf and... <laughs> And just run it, and you can yell, Hosanna, Hosanna. Absolutely. And, uh, and just, you know, if you don't want to make your own leaf, this is a great craft, and it's very easy to do. Um, One of our local churches actually puts palm leaves out. Just a little table yeah. right in front of the church. Yeah. You drive by, pick one up, so you can get an actual. Actual palm leaf. Yeah. yeah. It's very that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but so. the, the craft is easy to do, too, because that's, I can't guarantee every single church is going to do that. <laughs> that's right. But, you know, it gives you something to integrate the craft well, yeah. and as you're the story. as you're creating yeah. your mind you know you can think about what you're doing and right. it may actually help you understand it because sometimes when we sit down and try to study something you know we're just looking at words but right. when we got our mind on another activity it does you know help those things sink in right and sometimes it helps those questions come out as they're making something or yeah. thinking about the video but you know they can wave their palm leaves and pretend like they're welcoming Jesus as he's entering um, Jerusalem and celebrating Jesus and the donkey as you read the book or watch the video again and celebrate, you know, along with the crowd, the beginning of Holy Week. Yep. So, Absolutely. So that's what Palm Sunday is all about. And we hope that you spend some time with your kids and explain to them what Palm Sunday is all about and the beginning of Holy Week and Easter. And mm -hmm. we will see you next time. And if you're an adult, maybe find a bigger pair of scissors than I went and picked out. <laughs> <laughs> this this was hard. My my thumb kind of got in the little part here. Yeah. But no, we'll we'll, we'll do uh, that. So yes, yeah. uh, thank you for watching as always, and we will see you next week, everybody. Yep. Have a good week.